Hello viewers and subscribers, going to the red billabong screening tonight, just wanted to let you viewers and subscribers know of the Galaxy Man Show channel, so going to the red billabong screening tonight, um, can't wait to go see red billabong tonight, um, with my beautiful sister, beautiful mum and beautiful godmother, um, and we are going to go see red billabong tonight, the screening of red billabong, so can't wait. Uh, thank you all for coming out and supporting an Australian film. Uh, we've been on a road show, we've done Adelaide, Melbourne, and the reaction has been great. I'm not going to tell you what they think of it, so you can make up your own mind. Uh, this film is just a fun popcorn film uh, that I wanted to make for Australia to sort of counteract the uh, dramas, which are really awesome that we have really good dramas out here, but I think we need some good fun action films. So it's a love letter to Australia, a love letter to Australian cinema, and a love letter to my favorite genre of films, which are the 1980s and 90s, Aliens, Predator, Jurassic Park, and stuff like that, made on an Australian budget. So uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, yeah, talk to you after the film. John Reynolds and Emily Joy. Ladies and gentlemen, please park. <laughs> thanks, Alex. Uh, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There's Red Bill one. Uh, thanks for, again. Thanks for coming out. Like I said at the start, uh, we're just going to do a brief Q and A, uh, our favourite moments and all that kind of stuff. And then please sing out any questions, and uh, we will answer them. But uh, on the Ben Chisholm, Ben, your thoughts on the movie, your journey, uh, your favourite scene, etc. Can we narrow it down to one of those three? Or? No, okay. Um, this is the full time, uh, the, the first time they've actually seen the full feature totally and utterly completed. Uh, I went to the Melbourne premiere, the Adelaide and also the Sydney and this one absolutely shit on all of them. So I was totally stoked. Uh, <laughs> good job, man. Well done. Yeah. <gasps> Woo! Um, uh, what was the other question? <laughs> oh, the journey. Look, um, life is a journey. So uh, everybody has to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How was it like playing BJ? How was it like playing the comedy relief? I was playing a character. Uh, look, BJ was a very interesting person. When Luke and I first discussed BJ, he, um, he told me originally what his thoughts were. And he had long hair and tats everywhere and just was a total and utter nasty unit, which, you know, Let's face it, everyone can, can, you can agree, BJ just wanted to be loved, okay? He wasn't nasty, he just wanted a cuddle from a lot of different women, but still, and he wanted to make money. So Luke and I sat, we discussed it, and we thought that there was a little bit more to BJ, especially when you had Sam, who was a psychopath, um, and you already had those types of people, so therefore we thought, Rather than just having BJ what the original thought was, let's mix him up a little bit and give him a little bit more life. And I think he kind of worked. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, you're... <laughs> so, yeah. I think he definitely did. And uh, Dan and Tim would have loved to have been here. Segue, um, segue to back, segue back to Dan, uh, Dan and Tim. They would love to have been here, but uh, they were on other jobs, so unfortunately they couldn't make it. But I'm sure if Tim was here, the first question was, "What's with all the drool every every time he's there?" <laughs> um, that's just a that's just a character thing that he wanted to do. But uh, it's I'm glad everyone laughs all the time because when you laugh with people like BJ and Tim's little thing, you get to enjoy the character a little bit more that I find anyway. Um, so that was always good. I have a quote from Tim from, I have actually a quote from Tim about his drool. Uh, if you bear with me for one moment, we'll bring it up because I actually said to him at the couple of the other premieres, I said, mate, your drool, it got some of the best laughs in the whole thing. So you're an asshole, you took it away from me. And uh, his response was, nice to hear my drool has good screen present. Uh, I taught it everything it knows. <laughs> No shit. That's from Tim. <laughs> nice. Uh, John Reynolds, you play basically the film's villain uh, because I wanted 
there to be a human villain for the humans to fight, fight rather than just having the Bunyip, uh, which is very you know, mythological, supernatural, uh, with the Aboriginal Indigenous content. So uh, we let him be the superhero, and uh, you get to fight uh, Dan Ewing. Um, speak a little bit about that. Thank you, Luke. First of all, thank you so much for coming out. It's, it's a lot of fun. You agree? Yeah. yeah. It's good fun to do what we do. Um, obviously, you've got Tim and Dan. Um, I'm here to represent the over 40s. So, you know, more power for the... Moving on. Um, yeah, thanks to Luke. Uh, it was interesting when we initially did the uh, casting and he said, oh, I was going to be one of the, um, the henchmen. And he said, I would like you to uh, try out for the... For Sam, and we did the audition and stuff, and he went, "Yeah, nah, you just be one of the henchmen." Yeah, I'm just fucking with you, mate. You got the job. It's all good. <laughs> so it was good. It was good to um, sort of bring a, a human aspect to that, and, and it's interesting to try and play the bad guy. I remember the Sydney audition, uh, the premiere, and a guy came out and went, "Mud up, I would want to mess with you." <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Job done. So hopefully, there's a an element of, of menace there, and. I think we all have a part of us that is, um, is dark and, and we all feel like, you know, essentially we're just trying to be the best we can be and be the worst we can be. Um, so hopefully, you know, Sam was an element of, of everyone's dark side to just feel like you don't want to miss out. So, so death is just a byproduct of my success. And uh, we got there in the end, maybe. Did we die? Did we? Okay. okay. Cool. We did. We died. <laughs> Thanks, John. Uh, Emily, uh, you get to play a few little things in this movie. You get to be kind of funny, and then you get turned into a siren. Um, so, speak a little bit about your journey on Red Billabong. Thanks guys, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, I got to... It was really fun getting a kind of a duality in a role that you don't get that much with with films and so I spent half my days as sweet little Kate and then half my days as Siren and that's a really cool challenge, that was really fun but the special effects, that did everything because all I did was stand and stare and they get the eyes and no contacts, thank God. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. That's women, isn't it, duality? <laughs> you can pass it on to Jess and Jess, also yourself, uh, that same sort of role, pass it back there. Off we go. Um, yeah, pretty much same as Kate. Um, it was really fun to play, especially the water spirit. It's always fun to sort of play a dark kind of character, even though it was pretty simple. Um, but it's really cool to see the finished product and see our eyes all white and red. And yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> you were dark. Did you see my spray tan? That was dark. <laughs> and if anyone has any questions, please just raise your hand and one of these guys will point it out because it's, it's best to uh, get us talking on something because we filmed this you know, like last year and, and, and some of the year before, so it's a long time for us uh, to go through all the, the journey, I keep saying. Um, but uh, some of the crew are here tonight as well, the post-production team are basically all in the front row here, so big hands for them. Uh, those guys... Those guys put in a lot of late nights recently together here. Uh, we've also got, you know, with the post-production, the, the sound guys, who is amazing sound. Uh, the, producer, the producers over here, uh, Kali Emery and, and uh, Carmel, who the unsung heroes of the film industry. Uh, so it's been a big family journey, a big labour of love to get this uh, crazy little action monster movie made. But it's also been a lot of fun, I guess. Uh, there's been some funny stories on, on the set. Uh, Jess Green uh, broke, her, broke her leg or ankle, something like that. We'll pass it down and uh, see what she says. Um, yeah, I decided to text and walk and fall downstairs um, halfway through filming. So pretty much all the scenes you see me where I'm trying to run and walk I've got a broken ankle, so um, I used to, I would take my moon boot off in between takes and yeah, it, it was sore, but we got through it. <laughs> it was so good. You guys can talk, talk, please. And Jess also had a lot of Valium too. <laughs> yeah. 
That's not true. <laughs> well, I mean, with, with Jess, it's like, I didn't want to make a sort of cliche. There's a fair bit in a film where it sort of bucks the trend of the cliche thing. You think the girl's going to die first or, or that, and it goes in a different direction. Um, I really didn't want to have a girl hurt her leg, you know, to stumble through the bush, and she goes and really breaks her leg. So I had to have a shot of this girl breaking her ankle just to make sure everyone knows that she has a sore ankle. So that was kind of annoying. Uh, another funny story was uh, the site office where we filmed the uh, the the, new the, what? the new Hope site office. Yes, the, okay. the, the new Hope site office. Yes, we rocked up there on the location scout, and it was this awesome, clear bit of land as you saw in the movie. We didn't have to do anything to it. We thought this is great. Just put the site offices there, and uh, it all worked out really well. We came back the next day to film, and there was this massive pile of shit, like literally. <laughs> like horse shit and just other this shit. It was just, it wasn't just a little bit, it was like 14 dump trucks came in and dumped like just crap everywhere. So we sort of looked around and went, okay, then what's going on here? But we have a permission and we you know, paid the guy and so we just kept going and we shot this way, not the shit way. Um, and we just kept going, it stank and there was flies and that's why he mentions in the film, I'm sorry for the flies, it's part of the course because they were everywhere. So we just put that in. And then the next day, we rock up to continue on the continuity of the, sh of the shooting, and uh, there's a guy standing there, sort of looking around all the tire tracks and looking at all these out unit vehicles, and he's standing there in the middle, and I walked up, and he's like, what are you doing here? And I said, this is where I'm making my movie, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, this is where I dump my shit. <laughs> so, we've got a big problem, because I don't know how good this is to have people walking around in my shit. Um, and I said, well, we can't not film here because we already shot yesterday and it's going to cost me uh, X amount of dollars to come back. And he's like, well, I don't know, mate, I'm going to have to shut you down. And I was like, crap. So all the crew are walking in. <laughs> so, exactly, crazy. And all the crew rock up and I'm like, it's okay, we'll just keep going, just just hang on. And the guy comes back and lets me do it. And he says, oh, but you got to make sure you wash all the vehicles and everything else. And I said, is it like dangerous? And he said, no, I don't know, I don't think so. Um, and I was like, okay, so the crew come up to me saying, is it, is it dangerous? I'm like, no, nah, it's all good, just keep going. And I'm walking away going, fuck, I hope this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. there's, there's seven crew members still in hospital at the moment. I say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, being an independent Australian film, you're always up against it, uh, up against time, up against uh, the elements. Um, you know, we shot in the Billabong, we went to the Billabong location during the day, it was really nice. And then a massive cold snap happened out of the desert. And of course, that's the night we had to go in the water. So all the guys are freezing in the water and everyone's like, I thought this was Queensland. And I'm like, well, what are you gonna do? I can't do much about it. Uh, so yeah, it's just funny stories like that all the time uh, to get this made, even right through post-production. There's been a lot of funny stories to get this done. You know what I'm talking about, Mitch. <laughs> this guy. Uh, so if there is any questions, um, we don't want to keep everyone uh, you know, raving on down here and we'll be outside, you can talk to us one-on-one -on -one after this. But if there's any questions, please ask now. Uh, raise your hand, don't, don't be shy. Yes? It's a lot of fun. It, it's something I think we all strive to uh, achieve something in our life that we want to be recognized for and, and be able to just continue to do what we love to do and i mean for me personally it's been probably more than you know 15 16 years of, of continually doing something over and over the repetitiveness and i guess from what uh, luke's been saying sometimes that's the breaks and you just got to deal with the shit that comes with that so i mean you know life is a cliche and i think sometimes uh, one of the best sayings that i have is that um, we, we have wonderful opportunities that are disguised as impossible situations. So for me personally, you know, you, you go through life and you have uh, marriages and divorces, and you have children, you have life that keeps going. But if you have a passion and you want to keep kind of, you know, believing in what you want to do, this is just a recognition that you can kind of have that, that place um, and, and people will reward you for your hard work and tenacity. So, you know, for me personally, it's, uh, it's always, you know, at 44 now, I, I'm, I'm just starting out as a baby. You know, it's been 15 years to be kind of a minimum of success and hopefully it continues from there while you do all the other crap Then you sit there and one, one moment you're up there and then tomorrow I'll be sitting in a security booth pushing your button going, hi, how are you going? Can I open the door for you? And, and that's about as real as it gets, isn't it? So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, when you get to do something you love to do. That's deep. That's deep. Very good.
Uh, any other questions? Yes. What did you guys all learn out of filming Red Billabong with all you, like the filming and everything? What did we learn out of Red Billabong? Uh, I don't know if I can answer that because like no, <laughs> I've learned I've, I've learned everything. I, I learned everything, but nothing, but everything again. I, it's just like relearning everything you want to know. Making a movie, it's probably one of the hardest things. Not the hardest thing. Well, people out there, you know, curing cancer and all that kind of stuff. There's nowhere near that. But you know, if it was easy, everyone would do it, I guess. But um, it's 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 difficult. It's fun. Um, that's what I've learned. But it's very encompassing of everything. But I think these guys can answer it a bit better than I can. What did I learn? Um, I'm not actually an asshole in real life. Uh, that that's kind of cool. <laughs> really, really, do we have to go there now? No. It's it's the process. Like you learn so much. Like especially with the different people that you work with. Like the crew that we work with. I learned so much off them. I learned so much off the different actors that we got to spend time with. Like you know John Felix. Like Felix has been in the industry since I don't know. I think Jesus was in a small play with Felix once. Like he, no, no kidding. Everything in Australia, if you look on his IMDb, you will see this list that just keeps going and going and going. He just oozes talent, and to work alongside him, like what there were about forty different cuts of him and I just bantering on, and that's just because he would just feed you and feed you and feed you, and then working alongside Emily, working alongside Jess. All of us are in different stages, and the fact that even you know with Emily, with Jess, with John, there were moments where you're able to pick just bits of learnings from each and every different individual, and that's same same with the crew too. Uh, yeah, Tim, right too. Oh, look, Dan, eh, you know, <laughs> Tim, eh, you know. I mean, they're working at the moment. So I don't <laughs> That's not true. No, I love both of those boys. And again, both of them, they were so supportive. Like, I'd never worked with them before in my life. And, you know, I'm supposed to be playing against both of them and have some form and shape of a relationship with both of them. And yet both of them with open arms was just like, yeah, what's going on? And I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Shoot, I've watched you on TV, man. What's up? <laughs> it's so different. But yet, again, the learning was there. They both were open for advice, both for open for giving advice, and yeah, it was amazing. I won't talk that long. Um, <laughs> um, just a really interesting technical thing, because I'm an actor, and that was my first feature film. I'm from a theatre background. And there's always this kind of stigma with film of, oh, filming's easy, you get as many takes as you want, and that is not true, not not with anything I don't think and especially not with our budget you get one two takes like if sound and picture's good they're moving on so you have to hit it and that was a really rough lesson to get on set that first day and they're like yep great we got it I was like oh that was a warm up okay we're in it um so that was really cool to just kind of I don't think you can learn that in a class or in a workshop it's only by being on set and doing it and working under that kind of pressure you just have to step up and that was a really cool lesson <laughs> Jess learned not to talk in uh, Q and A's. That's what Jess learned. Are you serious? Come on, man. Is there another question? Thank you for that. Yes, thank you. What's next for me? Uh, I don't know. We'll see how this movie goes. <laughs> um, no, I, I want to do a, a, another action film. Like I said, my mandate is to make uh, fun Australian action films to counteract some of the other movies that are being made so we can make a, a good mix of genres in this country. Um, because like I was in Melbourne yesterday and there's a Korean film festival coming out and the Korean, Korean film festival, the trailer for it, there's like car chases and big huge stunts and I'm like, wow, these Koreans, they you know, get behind their own movies and they create lots of different genres rather than just having one genre in Australia which is kind of the flavour of the month, which is usually come crime, dramas, kitchen sink, which is great. We have a really good voice when it comes to those sort of movies. But uh, yeah, I want to keep doing action, so I'm going to do another movie in Melbourne at the end of the year, hopefully, and it's another action film. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to do next. Thank you. Uh, is there another question? Yes. Hello. Yeah, um, I'm just, just wondering how much research you did into like, the Aboriginal uh, sort of dream time. Mm. 
Absolutely not. No, no, that's not true. So I started writing this film back in 2007, just before I worked on Steven Spielberg's The Pacific miniseries as crew. Um, and in that time, while I was doing that, I was just researching, researching. Uh, once I found the bunny up, uh, which I've known since I was a kid from Dot the Kangaroo or a couple other shows like that. Um, Dot and the Kangaroo. Oh, bunny up. Bunny yeah. yeah. Isn't it nice? It's nice because we've had a very big social campaign where we haven't shown obviously what this monster is, like what is it. Um, so everywhere we've gone, we've had to be like the creature. But now you guys all know it's a bunny up, so there we go. It feels good. Um, so did a lot of research to make sure that I got it right and also worked with indigenous groups to make sure that I was respectful. Um, and they had really good feedback to me and uh, to make sure that it was all good. And uh, yeah, and I turned it into my own little creation to make sure that uh, I wasn't stepping on anyone's toes. And uh, thank you for the question. Uh, is there another one up the back there? Yes. Yeah, you. Um, you. <laughs> just in terms of the preparation that you guys did um, before you would turn up to set and then as soon as you got up to set, um, how did you keep up um, Pace and also stay on the same page so that no one was falling behind, so that when you did have to you know, uh, do the take, everyone was on point. That's a good question. Um, I had, a, well, for me personally, directing, I'll pass on to these guys in a minute, but I had a great team, a uh, really good Queensland crew behind me who I've worked with before on other films. Uh, Andrew Condor did the DOP, which is just fantastic. Um, so I was able to sort of give my storyboards and talk to them during pre-production. So when I was on set, I could spend a lot of time with these guys. And my mandate with them was to let them really build a character and ad lib as much as they possibly could with me. So we would go off set, especially someone like Ben. Um, I'd let them do a few takes. Then me and Ben would go around the corner and just make up some cool shit and come back and just say, hey, throw this at the guys in this next day and see what happens. Um, and that was really fun to do. Uh, but the preparation for me with the actors was, yeah, really critical because uh, I wanted to make sure the characters came first before any sort of CGI monster, even though he's cool. Um, yeah, what about you guys? Let's start it from the other end. Okay. Come on. Go on. I had a little book. I had a notebook and I had all my scenes written out. I have what happens in that scene? Um, what do I want? Where's Kate at? Is she human or <laughs> siren y? Because um, we shoot out of order and then just on the day of shooting, and you have so much time on set um, when you arrive, you know, you're in wardrobe, hair and makeup, and you sit around for three hours while they set up the scene. So I just would go through my notes and um, refresh myself of where she's at and what my relationship is to everyone. And then when you're on set, um, you do like a block through rehearsal, um, and then you you shoot and you just hope it's all there. <laughs> I think the key two words for me is relationships and intention. So you know the work doesn't start when you show up on set. You've done that. You've spent every single moment of your life preparing yourself for a moment, and when you get there, you can't just say, "Hey, you know what? I hope it shows up." So for me, the intention of what my character is you know, what he was going to do, if I have to adjust that to a, to the other person's nuances or, or character analysis, that's all about relationships, isn't it? Um, you know, in human life, we don't necessarily get prepared for the relationships and the drama that we have, but as actors, we, we learn to listen, we learn to be receptive. So, I mean, if we, if we could, you know, role reverse sometimes in life, we'd probably get along a lot better if every single person just learned to listen and react accordingly. But, you know, as learning to try and make it look as real as possible, you know, that's something that obviously you, you will try to do, otherwise you just watch a film and people are going, hi, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing? And it gets very boring and very stilted. So, you know, that's that's the fun part about, you know, your your craft starts the moment that you think about what it is that you want and, and set out and try to get that. And I think the relationship happens when two people kind of have this authentic uh, relationship where they just want to be in the moment with each other. And I think that's kind of, if that works, you feel it and you enjoy that process. If you don't, you go, well, it kind of sucked. So. Yeah, mine started with a spray tan, so shit, yeah, really. Um, and then a lot of coke, as you could see on the screen. That's not real, okay? No, 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 uh, it was about the people that we work with, pretty much like John said. I would sit down with Tim, and because I had a lot of scenes with him, we would just bounce, and then we'd bounce with Luke when we actually got on the set, and then Luke would say, you know what, you two, just go for it. Let's see what rolls. 
and it was fun because it was very, very organic. And I, I'm pretty sure that it came across on from the screen that there wasn't very much acting. It was very organic, and we just, as John said, we listened, we responded to each other, and we just were in the moment. And then afterwards, went, "What the? What just happened?" Yeah, you know, that was a good take. We're moving on. Oh, okay then. Yeah, you know, cool. And that was it. So the prep happened beforehand. And then when we were on set, there wasn't a lot of prep. It was just we got in, we did the work, and then we moved on. And especially because we were on a tight budget, you know, that's what you got to do. You got to hustle and you got to work. Granny? Just green. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so bad at. Um, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, pretty much what Anne said, yeah. I had um, my script in a folder and I had notes everywhere and little um, tags hanging out so I could. Refl um, flick back to the last scene I was seen in, what I did, what I didn't do, how I felt, you know. Um, so then you can just bring it into the next scene so it's not random. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, Jess. Uh, any other questions before we let you good people go? Yes. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, I guess we'll start with Jess to this side as well. Awesome. <laughs> I loved Max. Digger the dog. <laughs> I thought he was a fantastic little actor. Um, yeah, he was amazing. But also, um, I, I, I don't know. I really liked, I guess, um, Sophie's character. I thought she was very strong and um, she did a great job. So, yeah. uh, Gregory Fryer, who played Mr. Garvey. Look, I don't think I can yeah, narrow it down to anything. I just think it comes down to the relationships and I don't think it's meant to make sense. I think life's like that. I don't think if everyone asks you, hey, who's, your, who's the best person in your life? You might say your, your wife, your child and stuff, but you can't just single one person out. I think... Uh, well, I just did so. <laughs> Yeah, you can if you choose to. That's a choice in life. That's your choice. It's about relationships. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Phil. Um, moving on, yeah, I, I just think it's a, it's a ride and a journey and there's no outcomes and uh, we, we just end up... Uh, with opportunities to, to learn from one and each other. I think Sam's a good role model for people to... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Killing mayhem. I mean, what? Make money. I thought BJ was the best. <laughs> no, I, I actually really enjoyed Felix. I thought he was slimy as all shit. And he was so much fun to watch. And then when he died, it was even better. Uh, they're all my creations. They're all my little characters in my head, so I can't really pick one because I like all these little intrigues. Child, kind of having making the movie is almost like giving birth, but I've never experienced that, so I can't say that. <laughs> what? What? It's getting weird. Okay, next question. Whatever. Yes. I don't even care. Sorry. Were there any moments that you would hear the audience laugh and you go, really, really? That was well. Were there any moments where you're like, is someone laughing? No, no. I think. Um, well, we've done three or four now um, premieres. Everyone's laughed on the big beats, which is great. Um, every single every single beat. Um, so I know I'm onto something there, which is good. There's a couple of other Melbourne people laughed at different things than you guys laughed at. I don't know what that says about Queensland compared to Melbourne. Uh, when the when the drug stash was revealed, all the Queenslanders here were like, "Oh yeah." yeah, you did. yeah you did. You went off. I, I, I picked that one up. Melbourne was like, "Hmm, interesting, interesting." <laughs> I've got lots of drugs, that's wrong. <laughs> Queensland went, fuck yes! Yeah, you did! So th th that was funny. Um, yeah, so little, little moments like that I pick up in different states, but on the most part, it's all received very well and about the same type of laughs and, and different things, which is good. Uh, good for me. Can you give an example of a, of a Melbourne versus... I just did. <laughs> uh, that's a hard one. So just... running. Um, I, um, I don't know, off the top of my head, I can't really remember what you guys might have laughed at that they didn't. The, the drug thing was probably the most thing that came to my head. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. They lost yeah. 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 Um, I don't know, I, I think Melbourne probably laughed a bit more than you guys. 
But um, yeah, that's a, that's about it. Uh, I, I always laugh at people. <laughs> I always laugh at little things that probably no one else picks up that I just find hilarious. And that's why I left them in the cut. So that's why it's weird for me because I watch it. And I'm like, ah, that's hilarious. But no one's laughing. But it's my movie, so I don't care. <laughs> Exactly. I made this movie for me, and if other people enjoy it, that's great. Uh, another question? Any more? Otherwise, we'll wind no, it up and talk outside. Right at the back. Is that? Oh, are you? Yeah, you it's here. It? Is that improvised when you did that little jig on the, on the back? Totally. Totally. And it came up to him, uh, again, we had like two or three takes for every scene, which is really hard. And the very last one I said, actually it was the second last one, and I said, I said, just go nuts at the end, just be stupid. And that's what came out. And I was like, love it. And then we did it again. And I was like, be even more stupid. And it was too stupid. So we left that one. Because <laughs> these guys get a big head and they're like, yeah, I'm really funny. And blah. And I'm like, no, no, we lost it. We lost it. Shut up. Uh, yeah. Another question? Yes. Um, how many cars did you destroy during filming and how did that work with the budget? Um, that's a producer question. I don't know. I just rock up and say, I want to destroy the car. And they go, okay. Like, and then, actually, like, <laughs> yes, yeah. We had two, two utes that we destroyed. So the ones you see on the screen were destroyed. Um, I can't really exactly remember the details, but um, I think we had one good one and one we could destroy. And then the good one, one I wanted to destroy as well. So they're like, all right, we'll just destroy them all. Uh, we made sure that was the very last time we needed the ute and we threw it into a tree and they were like, well, that's the end of that ute. And I said, okay, no more pickups, no more reshoots. And then it got to Winton actually, not about cars, but we got the film all the way to Winton Film Festival at the start of July. And uh, we didn't have Ben for his death scene because low budget and we couldn't afford to keep him around in the cave. So we had a double and uh, it wasn't like you saw, it was very, I mean, it's in the corner and you couldn't see who he was and the bunny beats him and uh, we got to Winton and the crowd came back and they're like, oh, we love BJ, but what happened to him? We didn't see him die. Like, we just don't even know what happened. And I was like, okay, I think we need to do something about this. So we went back to the art department to try to find the cave and it all been wrecked uh, over the last year. And we found like one little piece of like metre length. I drilled it in my garage and those few scenes you see of him on the wall, that's my garage two weeks ago that we smoked up and it's like, there it is. <laughs> And it is still in the garage at the moment. It's still there. I rock up every night and I'm like, well, there's the cave. <laughs> um, so yeah, very interesting little things that you have to do on uh, Australian films. But yeah, thanks for the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll be outside. Thank you all for coming. Really, really appreciate it. Hello viewers and subscribers, I am back again and I just want to let you viewers and subscribers know of the Galaxy Mantra channel that I saw Red Billabong screening tonight and man, it was awesome. It was up to its heights and it was tremendous. Like, it, it's one of those top Australian films that people love and wanted to go see and man, it's awesome. I recommend people go see Red Billabong hits August 25th it, it's awesome I'm wordless because it's an amazing true Aussie film um, that people can get into love the whole I don't want to really give too much away yet because I'm going to take my two friends out to go see it um, because I'm definitely going to go see it a second time uh, with my good friend Clark Channel and of course uh, our cameraman Bryce and it was amazing. I've got to say, it was amazing. Luke Spark made an awesome, epic film uh, called Red Billabong, uh, coming out August 25th. It's, oh my gosh, it, the cast did an amazing job. Loved the whole cast, What loved the whole acting side to the whole cast in Red Billabong. It, it, they did awesome. Tremendous job. Like, the whole cast did a tremendous job. Loved it. Loved going to the screening, seeing the screening. It, it, it was awesome. So, uh, go see it, people, because I am so wordless, because it is amazing. And Red Billabong is coming August 25th. Just go see it, people. Go see it and see it for yourselves, because it is one awesome thrill ride of a movie, because it, 
it's tremendous. I'm going to say the cast did amazing. So I want to thank the cast, um, the, the director Luke Spark. You did amazing. Loved Red Billabong, and keep doing your best, Luke Spark, because you are awesome. So keep doing your best, Luke Spark. Um, keep being amazing. And to the cast of Red Billabong, um, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart that you guys are all amazing. So from the Galaxy Man Show channel, you guys are amazing. Um, and thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. You guys are all amazing. Peace out, guys. And see you guys next time. Bye for now. I was thinking before, do you remember the time when I saved you? All I saw was you flying down the back steps, jumping on the biggest kid's shoulders and just smashing him in the side of the head. Yeah, and then I grabbed that cricket bat and just started smashing everyone. Uh, you always had a lot of fight in you. Yeah. What was that? So... A couple of days ago, I get a letter from Grandad. Here we go. It's marked about a month before he died. Dear Tristan and Nick, I hope this letter finds you well. I made sure you get this letter to know my dying wish, and that my acres of land are given to the local Aboriginal tribe. Right, so what's your problem? There's this local developer. He wants to buy the land off me. You know the land here, it's, it, it's sacred to us. This stuff with Tristan, it's done. He's out. <laughs> Anya. Been a long time. Sure has. And now the party's getting started. Back from the What did you do? The guy's up to something. We gotta get out of here. Jesus, it's quiet. Yeah, well, it's country. It's supposed to be quiet. Uh, I mean, this is really quiet. It's never this quiet. like to be rich. So give you a job. This is it now. This is you. To the right! Why does Richards want the land? So we can what? Capture it? Sell tickets? You expect me to believe this fantasy story that you... It's not fantasy, miss. It's reality. Right down! It's Girls, you're the bait. What's in the house? Are you kidding me? I'm not leaving you like this. Please. You betrayed your family. Come on! Come on, you can do it! Come on! Where's the final girl? Tristan. Jesus, you're not gonna bite his head off.